Hello everyone and welcome to another story time brought to you by ABC Read. My name is Miss Sasha and ABC Read is a nonprofit 501c3 tax deductible organization and our mission is to develop and nurture a culture of literacy in black and underserved communities. I thank you all for joining me and make sure that you please give this video some likes and make sure that you Put some comments in the comment section below to show that you are engaged in these read alouds. Shout out to my student Dylan in the house. What's going on, Dylan? I hope that you are getting ready to listen to this read aloud. I got to give a shout out to my student, man. Dylan said he looks forward to me uploading these chapters. And I told him, I said, I asked myself, how come you didn't put no commas in the comment section though? Okay. So if you enjoy them, then you got to let me know. All right. Let those content creators know that you are watching and you are listening, gaining benefit. Put a couple of comments. All right. We appreciate that. Really, really. So I'm going to get right on into it, y'all. Today is the first day of Black History Month, y'all. And y'all know Black history is every day. But I just wanted to show you all. Right here, this is one of the books that we actually purchased today. Uh, well, no, we didn't purchase this today. It actually came in the mail today. Excuse me. Uh, we got the delivery today. And he is the founder of Black History Month. All right. Dr. Carter G. Woodson. Say his name. Say his name. All right. So now we're about to get on into it. Okay. J.D. and the Great Barber Battle. Written by Jay Dillard. Illustrated by Akeem S. Roberts. Main character, J.D. J.D.'s problem was, in the beginning, the jacked up haircut that his mom gave him. She, of course, didn't do it on purpose. She tried her best, right? But her best, you know, it just, it just needed some work. And so he was like, man, how am I going to go to school like this? I'm looking jacked up, whoop-de-whoop. -whoop. Went to school, got roasted, cracked on. Long story short, he fixed the problem. Cut his brother's hair first, then he cut his own hair, then all the rest is history, okay? Now this brother is in business in Meridian, Mississippi. That's the setting of this story, okay? So we got the main character, JD, and of course his mom. All right, she's one of the main characters as well. All right, then you got Hart and Son, the ones who own the only barbershop that is in Meridian, Mississippi. So JD is taking all of that in. He like, wait a minute, hold up. I cut dope hair? And there's only one barbershop and the kids, they loving the cuts that I'm bringing. It's on. So I just want to give y'all a recap. All right. Here we go. Chapter 10. Henry Hart Jr. has a problem. I loved everything about Pee Wee football. There were lots of kids on it who went to both Douglas and Catholic school. Since I was cutting the hair of most of the guys on my team, Meridian's Mighty Mice looked extra clean. We came up with a plan for everyone to take off their helmets after a touchdown and show off their haircuts. Jessica even got my sister to style her hair different. It was obvious that all the guys were getting their haircuts somewhere that was not Henry's. He never took special requests. No parts, no color, no high tops, and no dreadlocks. I don't think he hated these styles. He just didn't know how to do them, especially not on a kid. Check this out, Dad, my friend Xavier said after he scored a touchdown. He took off his helmet in the end zone. I had cut a picture of Mighty Mouse into the back of Xavier's head, which was always his normal high top fade. I had even colored it with my art pencils. I usually recognized most of the people who came to my games, but this time I had the weird feeling of being watched. Whenever we scored a touchdown or made an exciting play on offense, all the parents and friends in the bleachers would stand up and cheer. I played linebacker, so I was not on the field when we scored and could see one person in the bleachers who kept his arms crossed and stayed seated. He was wearing a knit cap and sunglasses. It was Henry Jr. I was sure of it. What was he up to? His kids were little, so he had no reason to be there. What else could he have been doing except trying to find out where all his kid clients were getting their hair cut? J.D., Eddie yelled to me after the game was over. 
that dude, Henry Jr. from the barbershop was asking me who cut my hair. I told him it was you. After the game, I waited for my family to find me to avoid Henry Jr. in the bleachers. My grandparents, Justin and Vanessa, were the only ones who came to my games. But mom had taken a night off from studying for her exams to watch me in action. Another win, mom, I said. My whole family caught up with me on the sidelines. Yes, and I can see you've been cutting a lot of hair while I've been out of the house, mom said as she squatted down and hugged me. Yeah, JD, not bad. But I bet you can't do girls' hair, Vanessa said. Did you see how good Jessica looked out there? She always had something to say. We piled into our car and it, and as it rolled down the street, I could only think about Henry Jr. and what he wanted. Hmm. Y'all, I told y'all. Oh my gosh. Let me show y'all. Let me just show you real quick, quick rather. Hmm. You don't see that man right there. Uh-huh. Looking like Ice Cube up in there. What Henry Jr. want? What's your predictions? What you think? He up there, y'all. He up there spying on little JD, a little kid, too. Oh, man. Well, we are going to find out in the next chapter, all right? So y'all make sure that y'all come with y'all predictions and come ready to find out what's going to happen with chapter 11. I'll just give you a, a little insight into the title of the chapter. The Visit. Dun, dun, dun. All right, y'all. Y'all been listening to another chapter of J.D. and the Great Bomb of Bato by J. Dillard, illustrated by Akeem S. Roberts. Make sure that you give this video some thumbs up. Make sure you share it. Make sure that you comment, <clears throat> Dylan. <clears throat> all right. And you all take care and please make sure that you are reading for at least 30 minutes a day. Peace.